All right, it's the Hawk. Today we've got the little matter of just one more pay-per-view to get through before we can speed ahead with the After the Damn War series, which follows what happens after the WWE and TNA Monday Night War of 2010 ended. We recently watched the TNA pay-per-view, and it wasn't very good. I expect this WWE pay-per-view from the same week to blow it out of the water. It's always quite enjoyable to see some new faces when it comes to pay-per-views as we've only been focusing on Raw and I have no idea what's been happening on SmackDown. Anyway, it's fatal four-way, will it make me spray? The show opens up with a video package proclaiming that John Cena is facing the worst odds in WWE history as it's going to be fatal four-way. I guess they've forgotten about Unforgiven 99, amongst others. This is the first and only pay-per-view strictly called fatal four-way. Hope that's not a sign of things to come. 10,000 people are in the Nassau Coliseum for this one. The show starts out with Vince McMahon and a recap of how the Nexus brutally crashed Bret Hart about in a car park. They've attacked Bret Hart because they all want contracts and he's being a dick and not letting them. Vince admits that Bret is too injured to be here tonight and he'll be taking appropriate action on the attackers. The chosen one Drew McDonald shakes hands with Vince and walks to the ring. This is one of those guys that we haven't really been seeing as he is on Smackdown. His entrance goes on for so long that I fall asleep. When he finally does get around to saying what he has to say, he calls out Teddy Long. Not much of a start to this pay-per-view. He wants Teddy Long to watch this match, and when Drew wins, he wants Teddy to hand the title to him. This is for the IC belt, which is held by Kofi Kingston. It starts with Kofi unable to take Drew off his feet, and Drew keeps showing off the power advantage. Kofi eventually monkey flips him and drop kicks him. He leaves the ring and Kofi dives down on him. Drew dumps in his chosen nappy of fear and runs away, but he's playing possum in his nappy though and he gets on top of Kofi. There's a nice move from Kofi in there as he does a back rolling kick through the ropes. It doesn't affect Drew too much though. This crowd are in silence. Drew really has come a long way, it was just too much during his first run. Apparently this is actually a rematch of the Over the Limit pay-per-view, a show I actually reviewed, but I have no recollection of this match taking place. Drew's had Kofi grounded for a very long time. After an even longer amount of time, Kofi hits a float over DDT for a double down. When they get back up, Kofi does another float over, this time into a pin for a two. Kingston's rolling now with a springboard crossbody. Drew shuts him down with a knee to the back of the head and he sits on him for a two. Kofi responds to a Russian leg sweep. He hits the boom drop and wants the trouble in paradise, but Drew McIntyre half runs and half dodges from it. To his credit, McIntyre hits a pretty nice big boot, but he doesn't make a pin. Kofi fights off his Future Shock DDT and flies off the top with a springboard DDT. It's not over though. That would have been hilarious because that's exactly the same way the TNA opener on their pay-per-view ended. Kofi unwisely mounts Drew in the corner. He of course gets thrown with a jackknife for a two count. Kingston recovers though and hits the SOS for a two. It's a very even back and forth affair. Kofi randomly does a leg scissors whilst holding onto the ropes. Drew desperately tries to escape which causes a ref bump. Whilst the ref is down, Drew sends Kofi into the post. He hits the Future Shock DDT, but no ref. Drew suddenly has a great idea and remembers that Teddy Long was a referee in his younger days and he forces him into the ring. McIntyre rips away the old referee's shirt and gives it to Teddy Long. I guess this is all that's needed to make it official. This goes on for a very long time, and if Drew was able to get a free after all of this, Kofi would be finished, his career would be done. Fortunately, he's not finished as it's just the two. Teddy looks like he's going to soil himself with fear. Now Drew spends ages slowly walking towards Teddy Long. He threatens Teddy until a Matt Hardy scrambles into the ring and hits the twist of fate. Kofi nails the trouble in paradise and that's the three. Well, this match did have its moments, but what a strange and dragged out ending. It really spoiled the pacing of this match and overbooking was like something out of a main event. A middle of the road to see in the end. In the back is the Fart Dynasty. They're all sad about the attack on Brett, but tonight they say they'll win their six-person tag team match to make him proud. That's if he's even conscious, but first. It's a fatal four-way for the Divas title. If this is anything like the matches over on Raw, it's going to be over by the time I open my beak to speak. Maurice versus Gail, who has zero business in this match, by the way, based on her booking. Also in this match is Alicia Fox, for some reason, and the champion is Eve Torres. What a Divas division this was. Most of them feel so bland. How can you be this attractive but this bland? I don't know, but they are. Anyway, Gail tries to dive, but Fox kicks her and hits a suplex. Randomly, Alicia Fox hits Gail with a turtle world backbreaker. Bless her, Gail is really trying to improve the match quality here. She puts on an octopus. Alicia and Maurice argue for an uncomfortable amount of time. Gail has another flurry of offense, which is eventually put to a stop when Alicia drops her on the ring apron. Eve hits Maurice with a net breaker and a moonsault, but she can't win because Alicia Fox breaks up the pin and steals the win. Alicia Fox is now the Divas champion? This match was the best Divas match I've seen from the 2010 era so far. There was actually a few big moves here and everyone looked like they were trying. Strange choice for a winner, but I guess the Eve experiment is over. It's a C. 
In the back, Rey Mysterio meets with the Big Show. He says he has more experience than anyone else in the world title match. Big Show says he's a man of God, but he won't hesitate smacking out Rey Mysterio tonight. Rey says his heart is bigger than the Big Show's fist, and so is his... No, he didn't say it last bit. I wonder if it's true or not, though. Chris Jericho is out next. He's going through his bowl of custard look. He has a mic, and he tries to cut a heel promo, but the crowd keep cheering for him. It seems he's feeling a bit worthless and low lately. He complains that even his NXT rookie Wade Barrett is managing to overshadow him at the moment. He brings up some key moments in his WWE career and that he's used to being the underdog. He compares his previous situation to what Evan Bourne is in now. He wants to end Bourne's career. It's kind of a nice spot to see Evan in. These two are going to have a match. It should be a good one. They aren't hanging about here. Evan gets a two off head scissors and a drop kick. Jericho can't get going. He falls to the outside and he's hit with a nice Evan Bourne dive off the top. Back in the ring, Jericho finally wakes up and hits the triangle drop kick. As Jericho cuddles Evan Bourne in a sleep hold, I couldn't help but feel these two look like some kind of deformed father and son duo. Evan manages to escape and hit some kicks until Jericho dodges one and hits a German suplex. But Chris Jericho takes too long Gorman out on the top rope and Evan Bourne jumps at him and snaps off a Frankensteiner. Evan tries a monkey flip though, which is countered into the walls of Jericho. Lots of people are still cheering Jericho here and you can hear boos when Evan makes it to the ropes. Y2J dumps his nappy of anger and he barges Bourne out of the ring and into the commentary desk. Jericho has lost his focus and Bourne drop toe holds him into the steps. Evan gets him back to the ring with a flying knee attack for a two. Jericho shuts him down with his old school backbreaker. He can't hit the lion salt and Bourne kicks him in the face. Evan Bourne takes too long attempting a shooting star so he misses it and Jericho code breakers him. Bourne gets his foot on the ropes. Jericho tells him to quit but Bourne won't do it. He comes close with a pin before hitting a nice tornado DDT. Once again, he attempts the shooting star, but he keeps taking too long up there and Jericho meets him. Bourne front suplexes him away, and there it is, the airborne to the back of Jericho, and that is the three. Wow, huge upset. They clearly had big plans for Evan Bourne at this time. A nice match with a surprising outcome. It's a B. Now a video package plays about how Kane has recently discovered that The Undertaker was in a vegetative state. He wants to kill whoever was responsible for this. So this overly protected brother has gone on a rampage, although accusing Rey Mysterio for taking out The Undertaker seems like a reach. And I'm not talking because he's small. The World Heavyweight title is on the line now in a fatal four-way match. The Big Show, CM Punk and Rey Mysterio and the champion is Jack Swagger. Let's all pray that Swagger drops the belt. The heels are both sent to the outside so that Mysterio and Big Show can have a face-off. Big Show throws Mysterio into Swagger and gets a two off a missed move by the cameraman. Show is really dominating and the rest look like little flies buzzing around him. Ray finally takes him down for DDT, and Swagger also hits the Vader bomb for a two. They drop kick Big Show out of the ring. It's Swagger's turn to dominate, and he almost beats Ray Mysterio for belly to belly. Mysterio eventually stops him and tries a 619, but he can't do that because Punk hits him with a springboard crossbody. He gives Ray a nice backbreaker. These two have been feuding for a bit since Ray shaved off Punk's haircut. Punk's forgotten about Swagger though, and he German suplexes them both at the same time. Ray shuts him down and tries a 619 again, but Big Show is awake now and he drops Ray on the commentary desk. The show completely clears the ring. He follows them out there, but the steps get kicked into him. Ray hits a 619 around the ring pole and Punk dives on him from the ring. Back in the ring, Punk hits the go to sleep on Swagger, but he's too tired to make the pin. Then Kane's music hits. He comes to the ring for casket. Kane decides CM Punk is responsible and he choke slams Punk into the casket. Luke Gallo saves Punk and Kane chases him away. Mysterio hits Swagger with a 619 and a splash, and that's the three. This was okay, it could have done with a few more near falls in a couple of minutes, it's a C. John Cena has a backstage interview to a mixture of cheers and boos. He's asked if he's worried that the NXT guys may turn up tonight and ruin his match. Cena says the whole roster have an agreement to stand united if the NXT guys show up. The next match is for the US title, it's the Miz who's the champion. He has a mic though, and he proceeds to steal the truce rapping entrance. The Miz looks like he wants to continue the rap, but the beat just runs out. It's entertaining when things go wrong, but the guy is talented enough to improvise. The Truth is the challenger, and his beat does not run out. The Miz wants to take a counter victory here. He doesn't get it, but the ref is seemingly very worried about the Truth's health. The Miz screams at the ref for a while to move, so he can hit a corner clothesline. This crowd sounds a bit restless in this one, as Miz is in charge for a very long time. It feels a lot slower and less chaotic than the last few matches. Truth finally hits a front suplex, and he hits a missile dropkick for a double down. The Truth keeps going with a flapjack and a flat liner. He gets another two off a suplex stunner. I was relieved because so far this has been one of the most boring matches of all time. Miz stops Truth's momentum with the stun gun into a back break and net breaker combination. He misses his follow up corner attack and Truth hits him with a scissors kick in the corner for a two. Now we get a bunch of near falls for the Truth. 
The Miz reverses the wheelbarrow pin and he sits on the truth for the three. A match which was really boring and then pretty fun for the last few minutes. I did expect a bit more from these guys and the crowd didn't seem to like it so much, so it's a D. Edge is interviewed now. He's going for his 10th world title tonight. Edge thinks that he has the best chance to win this fatal four-way match tonight because he is the least distracted. He pulls a constipated face and the interview ends. Before we can have that match though, we have to have a pointless six-person tag. The Fart Dynasty will face the Usos and Tamina. The Usos have recently debuted and this is their first pay-per-view appearance. Bit of a family ties matchup. I did think there was going to be nothing really worth seeing here, but I admit I got a reaction from the Hawk when Tyson tried to dive out the ring, but he was caught and Simone dropped into the barricade. And I was pretty much okay with that. The whole match, Tyson Kidd is isolated whilst the crowd groaned with boredom. This is just such a weird match to have on pay-per-view that Usos have only just debuted and they've not had time for people to care about them. They barely know who they are at this point. The ladies get the tag and Natalia almost wins with a Michinoku driver. Tyson Kidd hits a flip dive out the ring to take out the Usos. Tamina nails the second Samoan drop of the match, but Natalia isn't hurt and she wins with a discus clothesline. Probably the most pointless match of the night, and you can mostly skip this one, is a D. We've just got a main event Fatal 4-Way match left for the WWE title. Randy Orton, Edge and Sheamus are the challengers for John Cena's belt. Sheamus is seemingly the odd man out here with a huge golf and big match experience. As Edge and Sheamus team up on Cena, there's loud dueling chants of let's go Cena, Cena suck. Sheamus almost beats Cena with the Irish curse backbreaker. He tries to hit the Celtic cross, which is broken up by Edge. It's now Orton's turn to dominate. He hits the draping DDT on both Sheamus and Cena at the same time. The Edge big boots him and waits to hit a spear on Cena, but Cena dodges that and starts hitting the five moves of Doom. He can't finish them though, and Autumn returns with a cross back breaker and a snap slam to Edge. Randy starts gritting his teeth and going nuts. Sheamus stops him from hitting the RKO. Cena and Orton take out Sheamus on the ring apron, that one looked painful. That gives Cena the opportunity to lock in the STF on Edge. Sheamus breaks up the submission. Eventually Orton does hit the RKO on Cena with Sheamus coming to the rescue. Edge spears Orton, Sheamus bro kicks Edge, but he can't get the free. Striker on commentary calls him the Celtic Criminal, which is a nickname which didn't really take off. Sheamus goes flying across the announce table now. We cut to the back where suddenly some jobbers are watching the match and they're jumped by the NXT guys. I hope this isn't what Cena was talking about earlier when he said the roster was united. The match is all but stopped here as everyone just stands around waiting for the NXT guys. They rush out and start destroying the set again. They all charge to the ring and attack Cena. Surprisingly, Edge tries to help out Cena, but he pays for it. The camera cuts back to the ring where Sheamus randomly pins John Cena. Sheamus is now the champion. Cena is owned and destroyed and left crying in the ring. So much for the WWE roster standing together tonight. The show goes off the air to silence. Okay, my quick thoughts before the Hawker boards. Just like the TNA pay-per-view, this was kind of middle of the road kind of show. But WWE can get away with these. I've seen better and I've seen worse, but there was nothing here to make you curse. The most intriguing thing going into this one was Kane, and he didn't even have a match on the damn show. None of these matches were terrible, which is why this pay-per-view was better than TNA Slammiversary 2010. And there is the added buzz of what the Nexus are up to. I'd give this one a 5 out of 10, and now we can finally get back to our side-by-side -side comparison of After the Damn War, because I've been really wanting to keep that series going. And if you don't agree with that, I'll get your girl until she's showing.